Welcome back to Ladies of Another View, and I want to welcome back our guest, Scott Shepard. I'm going to give him the title Troublemaker, but his official <laughs> title yeah. is Director of the Free Enterprise Project, which is a program <clears throat> of the National Center for Public Policy Research. And I just want to put up their website because they, they are a good organization to support and just keep up with, nationalcenter.org an easier Easy. website than everything I just said. <laughs> and you can find all their programs under there, including the Free Enterprise Project. So we're going to talk about BlackRock, and you recently wrote an article about that. BlackRock's, re you, you asked, is there retrenchment from ESG Real? So I want to make sure our viewers are all up to speed. Tell us what ESG is and who is BlackRock. All right, so ESG is the, the words are environmental, social, and governance. And it's a, a mission by activist shareholders over the last 30 or 40 years, although it came under different names for a while, <laughs> uh, to put corporations to take aggressive positions on um, environmental issues and social issues that all spring from the left. So the ESG um, uh, environmental and social positions now are the same as the Biden administration's whole of government initiative, which is to say, decarbonizing on political schedules, which is going to make uh, uh, energy unaffordable to the average user, user. and uh, in the in the social realm, uh, adopting equity and discriminating on the basis of race, sex, and orientation, just in the other way than the discrimination occurred 60 years ago. And so, we just want corporations to stay out of politics and and, and stay in a neutral realm. Whereas BlackRock has been, uh, which is one of the big investment houses, has been using other people's assets to push these corporations to become political um, for, for more than a decade, which explains a lot of why um, American business has, has behaved as oddly as it has. I just want to make the point, just to make sure we understand. So because they're a big investment company, the biggest, that if the companies don't comply and go along, this could this could tie their hands in, in terms of whether they can even invest or stay in business, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly right. And, and Larry Fink, who's the CEO of BlackRock, has, has bragged about that many times, that he forces these behaviors on companies. Not use, He's a billionaire, but not using his private billion. What he uses is the money that investors put into BlackRock. And he uses all of that money, whether it's invested in an ESG-labeled fund, that's a, a relatively small amount, or uh, invested in regular funds where there's no hint that the money is going to be used in these political ways. So, you know, arguably, and I, and I think this would be an interesting case as well, BlackRock has been um, uh, committing fraud in the way that it forces these behaviors with all of the assets under investment for, for all this time. So I have some curiosities of my own. This, this sounds a lot like what happens in the school systems where they have um, social emotional learning and they're kind of doing social emotional uh, scoring for these businesses and most of the public needs to understand that no matter where they're invested this is affecting them correct yeah that, uh, that's absolutely right and look at some of the look at some of the examples um, uh, Bud Light and Target and Disney have been giving huge amounts of shareholder money to very partisan charitable groups They've been fighting uh, efforts uh, such as uh, uh, the, the the Florida law that just said, how about we keep discussion about sex led by uh, grammar school teachers out of out of those those schools, and and, and they jumped on and, and opposed that. They opposed uh, election integrity rules. They they, they opposed a anything that the Biden administration would oppose. These clowns opposed, and so. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really matters because in those three companies, they've taken a huge uh, uh, value hit. The shares are worth much less, and it looks like Google's going in the same direction. And so we definitely have a scorecard that indicates that it's bad for business. I just think a, a company such as BlackRock, and it's, it's so integral part of all our investment funds, I mean, you can't really get away from them. I mean, they have so much control. So they're putting out there that, oh, we're backing off of the ESG, we're laying off all these people that were part of it. But really, 
what they put out there. What is the real story behind it, though? Well, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, you know that when Larry Fink, the CEO, is saying something, that it, it's nonsense. He uh, <laughs> he talks more and thinks less than any billionaire. Well, no, I guess there's Bob <laughs> Iger. But, but so... <laughs> For a long time, uh, BlackRock did have ESG-labeled funds and regular funds. But the problem was, as I said, they were using all of the, those assets to push ESG goals, which itself looked like material misrepresentation. And the ESG-labeled uh, funds were losing money. So uh, they, they ended those uh, specifically labeled funds. Now, that could be because they realized ESG is a money loser. Um, or it could be because they're trying to hide the track. And in the same time that, that they did this, Larry Fink went on TV and said he doesn't want to talk about ESG anymore because we, the dumb, the, the dumb investors, know what that means and know what games it's pulling. Instead, he wanted to talk about conscientious capital. Well, <laughs> then he went, but he, he made clear that he meant the same thing by it. He just wanted to, to, to change the label. And my question for him is, is it conscientious for a guy to leave his mansion in his limo to go, fly on a private jet to the top of the world, to the World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. to sit around in well-heated uh, uh, luxury hotels eating Wagyu beef while they figure out how the rest of us can cut our carbon. Is it conscientious for him, the son of a, of a, a shoe sales, to have been able to rise to the top of his potential and, and become a billionaire in control of $8 trillion of other people's money and, and then turn around and use that power to deny other people, other young white male uh, people, the opportunity to rise by their merit as well. That, that both of those things strike me as profoundly comic book evil, not conscientious. Yeah, conscientious <laughs> investing. There you go. Another renaming of something evil because once we all figure out what it means and everybody's against it, now we have to call it something different and say, oh, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Um, and so it just seems like it's hard to even get away from BlackRock and that people are basically handcuffed. But you mentioned, you mentioned Target and Disney and Bud Light. They have suffered mm -hmm. from trying to score high on their ESG. They thought they were the good students, the brown nosers, and their <laughs> stocks went way, way down. So, so are there any lessons being learned here? Well, there might be. Um, so we found out today that one of the two proxy advisory services is suddenly going to offer a uh, an automatic voting option to big institutions and maybe to sm smaller investors that will allow them to um, vote their their shares uh, against left DSG and in favor of proposals like the ones we submit and some of our allies submit to try to get companies out of politics and back to neutral. Now, that's a first. Um, and, and again, it's brand new, but BlackRock has told us and others that it will offer that and it will offer it in time for this season. So um, we, we, we think that, you know, as much as Larry is always um, uh, going to be political in every way <laughs> and always going to be um, incompletely transparent, uh, it might be that BlackRock is learning. I sure hope so. You know, I bet they wish you would just go away, Scott, but we're glad you're out there fighting. We're glad you keep coming on our show. Thank you for coming on today. I know we'll talk to you again Thank soon. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You.